Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers. I am the Carb Addiction Doc and today I'm going to talk about a very, very important warning to anybody with type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease because there is a movement on the other side, on the algorithm medicine side of healthcare that is promoting a particular medication that is very, 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 very dangerous to people in our community. And there's a lot of polarized opinion, so I'm going to break down the facts. The medication we're talking about is something called an SGLT2 inhibitor, an inhibitor of the sodium glucose transport molecule, particularly in the kidneys. Now, what does that mean? Well, just look through the medications you're on. If you have type 2 diabetes, and sometimes now, if you have cardiovascular disease, these drugs are being used more and more. The drug names, for example, are for Sega, Jardians, Invacana, uh, Steglatro. Those are the medications that are being used as part of um, this regimen. And Please, if you're on these medications, they have serious, serious potential consequences in a negative way for you, especially if you are on a ketogenic diet. So if you are on these medications and your doctor is saying, rah, 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 these are so good for you, please stop the medication. But we need to find an alternative. So if you're interested, set up a visit with us, text, call, WhatsApp us, 561-517-0642. We can help you to exchange this to a healthier, safer, more effective medication. In this video, I'm going to break down some of the rationale behind the, the pros and the cons. But please, 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 if you are on these medications, talk to your doctor, talk to us about stopping them and changing them. And Jardians is the one that has been very, very heavily pushed right now by both the doctors working in the diabetic space as well as doctors working in the cardiovascular space. But first, folks, sometimes we drop out of ketosis. And I just want to give you a little hack to get back into the optimal range of ketosis. 0.5 to 2. This guy, Ketone IQ. It's an exogenous ketone. We've tried a whole bunch. This guy will pop you back into ketosis in optimal range for three to four hours. Look at the show notes and you will see a promo code that will get you 20% off. So how does all of this work? Well, the SGLT2 inhibitors, let's, let's go down the root of a little bit of science. There are molecules on your intestine and in your kidneys called sodium glucose co-transport molecules. Okay, sodium being salt. The, the sodium part of the sodium chloride of salt. So, and these probably occur also in the brain, by the way. They also probably occur in the brain and have to do with migraines and the potential for epilepsy and the potential for tinnitus. But we're not going to talk about that right now. Let's talk about SGLT2 inhibitors or SGLT2 molecules. These are complex proteins. And what happens is uh, under the influence of energy, ATP, these molecules shift glucose and salt together from one side of a membrane to the other side. So, for example, in the kidneys, what happens in human kidneys is there's this long uh, uh, pathway. Think of it a long pipe in the kidneys called the renal tubule. And at the upper part of the renal tubule, the body dumps a whole bunch of sugar and salt into the uh, into the renal tubule, and a lot of molecules follow sodium and glucose into the tubule when you're trying to excrete them. So all the garbage, all the junk that you're trying to get rid of also gets excreted at various levels. And then what you actually want to do lower down is you want to selectively reabsorb the sugar and reabsorb some salt from the uh, renal tubule, those are very important. So at the top side, in the top of the pipe, you excrete all of the salt and sugar into the tubule, and then lower down, under normal human conditions, you want to you suck in, suck back in that glucose, and together with it, salt. So these sodium uh, glucose co-transporters, SGLT2 molecules, at the lower end of the renal tubule, will suck salt and sugar 
out of the out of the pipe that's going to to your bladder to pee out and reabsorbs that sugar and that salt because remember for a normal human being uh, we are running at a slight sodium deficiency so sodium uh, sodium preservation is important and then also sugar preservation is important because most people historically have had too little sugar now in the era of abundance what we actually want to be able to do here's the thinking is to leave that sugar in the renal tubule and pee it out. So some clever scientists developed a molecule that blocks that sodium glucose transporter in the kidney. So at the top of the pipe, you get rid of all this, all this sugar, you pour the sugar into the renal tubule, and then lower down where it's supposed to be reabsorbed into your bloodstream, there's a molecule that blocks that. And these are the SGLT2 inhibitors that block the absorption of sugar back out of the kidney so you end up peeing out all of the sugar. So if you're on these medications, you're going to have a ton of sugar in your bloodstream. And in the laboratory, ideologically, it's a very smart idea. Very smart idea. However, and, and in fact, what, what we found is the benefits of these medications. Number one, they do lower blood sugar because you're peeing out the sugar. So you stuff your face with sugar and then you pee it all out. I know it's a, it's a bizarre way of going. If you don't put it in your face, you don't need to pee it out. But very effectively reduces blood sugar by peeing out the sugar. It also has two other effects. So it reduces, because you're peeing out the sugar, you're not absorbing it, you're not using it, you're not having to store it as fat. So the other thing is there is a slight 5-10% body weight reduction. So there is some weight loss with this medication. That's what it's been touted for. And then the final piece is these medications have been shown to lower diastolic blood pressure. So they do lower blood pressure <coughs> because they block the reabsorption of salt and sugar together as a combination. Salt and sugar together as a combination is really bad for you. So if they block the reabsorption of salt and sugar, from the kidney, not only is your sugar level lower, but your salt level is lower. That'll drop your blood pressure just a little bit, according to the cardiologists uh, who are working in a high sugar environment. We'll come back to that in a second. This doesn't mean that salt is bad for you. However, it does have, and the cardiologists have made some, a lot of, done a lot of work and, and made some huge statements saying how important these medications are, particularly in people with diabetes, for protecting your heart. So the pitch that they have is that this will protect you from heart failure, it reduces your blood pressure, and protects you, especially if you've got early problems with heart failure, there's a protective cardiovascular protective effect. So naively, naively, the two people that are promoting, the two groups of people that are heavily promoting these medications are the cardiologists and the endocrinologists or people treating diabetes. And they will convince you, oh, you must take this medication, it's going to protect your heart. They, they don't understand the mechanism. Some do, most don't. But they put you on these medications. Here's the problem, folks. If you are going to try to use a carbohydrate reduction diet, if you're going to reduce sugar and starch in your diet to uh, reduce your blood sugar, to treat your diabetes, to lose weight, and you're on these medications... And more and more people are reducing carbohydrate consumption to help you with uh, cardiovascular disease. If you're going to do that and you are on these medications, reducing carbohydrate consumption can actually lead to diabetic ketoacidosis, where the pH of your blood drops down. And that can be an extremely dangerous place to live. I have had, in my 20 years of doing this, three patients come in on these medications who are on a low-carbohydrate diet, ending up in the intensive care unit very, very sick because of diabetic ketoacidosis. And the bipolar nature of the cardiologists right now is they're totally, they love this medication. Uh, they just had the American College of, uh, uh, Cardiology, um, College of Cardiologists meeting in Orleans a week or so ago, and they published these bipolar papers, some supporting the use of these medications to improve heart failure, to improve cardiac function, especially in diabetics, and others showing that diabetic ketoacidosis, the drop in pH, is so bad for your heart. And yet they're, they're, they're telling you to take these medications. So please, 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 folks, if you are on 
a low carbohydrate diet, stay away from these medications. Yes, there are benefits to being on this medication. And in fact, the, the bizarre part is they looked at this medication with people that are using exogenous ketones and they showed how bad it was for you. So they've shown when you're in ketosis how bad these medications are for you, and yet they're promoting these medications. Please, folks, the best way to reduce your blood sugar is to not eat carbohydrates. But if you are on these medications and you need diabetic medications, come and talk to us. We can change that, okay? Because the danger, the risk is very, very high. The other risk that these medications pose, because you're peeing out a lot of sugar, they, can, they massively increase the risk of infection, because bacteria love sugar. So if you've now got a ton of sugar in your urine, there should not be sugar in the urine. If you've now got sugar in your urine because of these medications, your risk of urinary tract infections, especially in females who are more prone to get infection in their bladders because of the short urethra, especially in females, your risk of bladder cancer, of, of uh, uh, bladder infections, your risk of kidney infections, your risk of urinary tract, uh, tract infections goes through the roof. The symptoms are horrible. Your risk of dehydration increases uh, as well. And then the final piece is the worst part about this. And I've seen one case of this called Furnier's gangrene. Now, Furnier's gangrene is where that high sugar concentration, uh, as you're peeing, a little bit of pee, especially in females, gets on the perineum, that space between the top part of your legs where the vagina, your testicles, your, your penis, your anus, that little part, the perineum, the part between the anus and the penis exists. And because of the high sugar content and the type of bacteria that live on the skin there, you can get a more aggressive bacteria growing there and you can get a flesh-eating bacteria growing in that groin area. Think about that, folks. Furnier's gangrene is when a flesh-eating bacteria chews away the skin and the tissue in that very sensitive area of your body. Guess you don't want that. So those are the side effects and the warnings. And even the FDA has put out warnings about these medications. So please, folks, if you are on these medications um, and you want to start for Siga, Jardians, Invacana, Steglatro, if you are in on any of the SGLT2 inhibitors and you are starting or are on a ketogenic or a low carbohydrate diet, please, 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 please. please. Come and see us right away. Stop the medication. Talk to your doctor about other forms of medication. Now, the metformins, the sulfonylureas, the GLP-1 agonists, other oral medications are perfectly fine in this regard, but the SGLT2 inhibitors, please stay away from them. This is a, a serious warning to anybody on these medications. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. I hope you've learned something. I hope you're a little afraid. Take action.